There was a heavy weight on my shoulders, which I feel no more today. Tonight, surely there will be many closing their eyes to sleep peacefully. What happened was what they wanted and dreamt of for so many years. You're being way too bitter right now, Prime Minister. I vowed to the Almighty God and the Sultan to speak only in times when telling the truth. There are many flatterers in the palace. These are surely the last days of my life, Sultan. Let this very old man with a bitter tongue say what others won't say because they fear for their life, or they love their life too much, maybe. You have upset me quite a bit now, Prime Minister. What are you filling up the ears of the Sultan with now, Prime Minister? Communication with the elderly sometimes makes the heart weak. Old people who are nearing the end of their days, fearful of their death, tend to make others weak and timid as well. The Great Lady must know, better than I do, that there is a border between caution and fear. But you very well know that the line is quite thin. Instead of listening to this bitter old man, please listen to your cousin, who has at least brought you some news from afar from the city of Otra. Come closer, Khayrka. Don't be a stranger. I really hope you have good news for me right now, my cousin. I've heard enough bitter words for the night and need a change of mood. Your servant has no choice, because he has sworn to tell the truth, no matter what, be it sweet or even if it is bitter news. A group of Mongols? If the Sultan wishes so, I will gladly give you the news at a later time, if need be. Say it! Make me even more bitter! A group of Mongols? Disguised as merchants have entered into Otra for a few days. What they have for trade is quite little. It does not match their numbers at all. The goods that they had with them made me especially suspicious. I asked around and I realized that there are spies disguised as merchants who have come here to gather news about the land, secretly trying to find information that could hurt us, and not business. I am aware of the pact made between Sultan and Genghis, but is sending spies here Disguised as merchants part of the pact? This is unacceptable to me as a loyal servant. I cannot let them do as they please any longer. I am a border guard of the truly great Khorazm Kingdom. I cannot stand by and watch the Mongols betray us. I won't allow it. And if these secret spies, who are now in Otra, leave the city, which is a border area, and enter the other parts of the land, what are we to do? I give you full permission to do whatever you like to them. Stop them now! Hurry now, go back to Otra tonight and tomorrow and finish them off! A rush to kill the Mongols, even if they are truly spies, might be a little Silent, too Silent, Prime hasty. Minister! Silent! You do as I said immediately. Hurry right now, Gaia Khan, and finish it off soon tomorrow in the best way possible. You can go. But Your Highness, please listen to me. That's enough out of you, Prime Minister. You turned the ceremony for the Crown Prince into a mourning procession with the things you said. That speech you gave was that how to introduce a new Crown Prince or to pray for the death of the Sultan. Gold is beautiful, isn't it? Gold is always beautiful, really. It's as if the Mongol gold has a different shine to it. <laughs> it's a small gift for my great aunt over here. Five hundred Mongol merchants, and all your aunt gets from you is this one little chest as payment. You have become a little stingy, my nephew. If the Sultan, say, hadn't gone and ordered the killing of all those Mongols, 
What were you going to do with the 500 corpses in Otra, hey? <laughs> I was just hoping that my great aunt would help me. <laughs> I have seen her do much more greater things than this in life. <laughs> <laughs> I will forgive you this time, it seems. But from now on, don't you dare do things without receiving orders from me first. And also, don't take that old man's influence lightly, boy. Go back to Atra immediately. And before you think of what to do with the corpses, send your aunt her share before anything else, in full. Do you want to know why the Mongol gold has such a different shine to it? Because it is covered with blood. The blood of pure innocence. Coming. Coming. Is Baha'i Din Valad in? Yes. Was it, dear? Obeyed. <laughs> what horrible news does he have with him from which horrible part of the land this time? Whose death has he brought news of for us this time? He's such a curse, that one. <laughs> Don't stand here watching me. Don't let them waste the dough and the bread. They might just burn it. <laughs> Halime. Halime. <laughs> don't let the dough go to waste, Helena. No, my dear, don't worry. Don't worry, nothing will happen. The dough will be okay, I promise you that. <laughs> oh. <laughs>